principal. I'm director of the School of Community Health here at Portland State University. Uh, I also work with Dr. Richardson. Have you, uh, have you Can I introduce myself? There you go. Yeah. Hi, I'm Dr. Richardson, Don Richardson. My name should be burned into your brain at this point because I've sent, I want to say, like 50 emails to each of you. Um, and I had the pleasure of interviewing many of you as we've actually spoken. And it's just so just gratifying and um, exciting to finally meet you. It's been a culmination of, it's really been a few years, but I mean, it feels like, you know, just these past few months, um, it's just been just a whirlwind. And here you are, and here you sit, and we're about to, or we already have really embarked on this journey. So it's just great to see you all here. Um, yeah, so thank you. And then, I guess, Colin, but, um, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, Colin, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I see you, Tom. I did yeah. not see you back there. So, I, I told you there you go. so uh, I am going to give you a quick overview of how we got here. Uh, uh, probably less uh, philosophical, but more like this is mechanically how we got here. Uh, and uh, and give you a, a, a good uh, background of uh, what's going to happen to you for the rest of your life. But actually, it's designed to be that, that level of transformation. Uh, so we we are funded by the National Institute of Health. And some of you might, might not know who the NIH is. Uh, it's a federal government. They get money from you, from your parents. Uh, when we pay taxes, it goes to <coughs> big box, and then the federal government divides it into RV, health, Social Security, etc. It's actually the place in the world that funds the best uh, medical research. So if you think about uh, how are we going to find the cure for cancer, and you ask yourself uh, who's working on this stuff and where are they getting the money. Well, it comes, for the most part, from the National Institute of Health. Uh, not exactly from the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, the benefit from the research that happens and is funded. Uh, and they, uh, they, they want, money in and of itself is not going to find, for example, the cure for cancer. Uh, the, the cure for cancer is going to come from ideas, from scientists that have ideas and are going to test them. Okay? And you will be that person. If you think about cancer in and of itself, uh, there are the biological bases for cancer, right? But it's also related to lifestyles. It's also related to our health systems. All these things come into place. And what we have learned is that our, the people who are doing research, uh, from, I don't think they're running out of ideas, but we need more and better ideas. And in order to do that, we need diverse people. People have different points of view. Our great discoveries, some of them, were unplanned, were uh, mistakes that ended up in a penicillin or something like that. So we can't completely rely on training scientists in the lab to come up with great ideas. That's where you come in. And that's where this project comes in. The National Institute of Health uh, uh, doing research among themselves about what is it that we want, how many people we have trained, how many discoveries we have made, and how diverse is our workforce. And they realize that the biomedical workforce is not that diverse. Uh, and one of the things that they want to expand that was creating this building, university, infrastructure, leading to diversity. And if you look at the, uh, what that means, the B, I, uh, whatever, we end up with, uh, <laughs> uh, with, with Bill. We, we actually responded with, to Bill with uh, EXITO, which stands for Enhancing Cross-Disciplinary Infrastructure Training at Oregon. Uh, EXITO, uh, some of you might know Spanish and know that EXITO means what? Success. It's not, doesn't mean exit, like. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, that's success too. If you can graduate and exit 
that's actually success. That's very critical. Uh, then here are the major uh, uh, goals of our proposal. A lot of uh, words, etc. But what you'll see is some of you are coming from Oregon, from Washington, from Alaska, from the Pacific Islands. Uh, we want to implement innovative ways of engaging scientists. And uh, we want to evaluate the impact we have at the institutional level. While you are coming in and you're exiting, the university has to develop that infrastructure so we do what we do better. So we bring, uh, in a long-term basis, uh, more diverse students, more diverse ideas, and the faculty and the universities, we also have to learn. And you have to teach us, and we're going to learn together. So uh, you'll see that we have friends uh, from Portland State. Actually, who's from Portland State? Uh, all right. Excellent. And the faculty from and staff from Portland State, uh, Tom Keller, Deisha, Charles Daniels. You want to stand up just so we people can. Are you OK? Don't reach or something? All right, good. Uh, who's from Oregon Health and Science University? So Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Oregon Health and Science University, if you look up the hill, there is a, a mountain that it's disappeared. It's now a whole bunch of <laughs> buildings and buildings and buildings. Uh, there's a medical research institution. Uh, one of the best, actually, medical research institution in the United States. Uh, they get a lot of uh, funding to do research in, in health sciences in cancer, in heart disease, etc., well recognized worldwide. And then we have uh, partners from all over uh, the Northwest and the Pacific Island. So uh, who's from Clackamas Community College? All right. And the faculty and mentors from Clackamas, you want to stand up? Yes, so uh, we, there you go. All right, thank you. Uh, who is from Portland Community College? All right. Excellent. And the faculty from PCC? They're definitely coming this afternoon. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting is uh, they happen to me. When I used to work close by where I used to work at, uh, actually I used to work at NIH, I would be late for my meetings. Then I'd move away and I had to attend back. Uh, and I was always on time. So you will see that the people who live closer are less likely to be on time. <laughs> <laughs> are here already. <laughs> Uh, Chemeketa Community College, all right, and the faculty from Chemeketa? Adam will be here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Clark College, all right, and the faculty from Clark College? All right. <laughs> <laughs> we have more faculty than students. That's we, came, we came a long way, basically. All right. Okay, there you go. <laughs> from another state, uh, University of Alaska. Excellent. And uh, who's from uh, faculty from University of Alaska? Excellent. Thank you. Uh, American Samoa Community College. We probably do not expect anybody from Samoa uh, this meeting. We're having a second session. Uh, it's, um, you, you'll see the, the distance. Uh, Northern Mariana College. All right. Excellent. And the faculty from Northern Mariana? Welcome. University of Hawaii, we probably do not expect any students from Hawaii uh, at this meeting. Uh, University of Guam, no. okay. Any faculty from Guam or Hawaii? All right, so there, there's gonna be a second session uh, later in the summer for students from Hawaii, Guam, and American Samoa. So these are partners, quite diverse group of, uh, of students uh, coming from many faraway places. Uh, and uh, they will come here to Portland State University. Uh, and this is a, a brief description of uh, Portland State. Uh, it's an urban research university. Uh, it's not your average university where it's built some place where uh, no one wants to go, but a place where people are excited to come. Uh, so you will see that uh, the co-admission agreement, some of your universities have an agreement with Portland State where you can actually be enrolled in both at Portland State and at your home institution. We want to take advantage of some of this infrastructure that exists, and where it doesn't exist, we would like to create some additional one. 
These are things that are happening outside of you as a student, but actually developing that institutional infrastructure. OHSU, like I mentioned, there used to be a mountain. Now we got buildings, and that's at OHSU, and it's a hospital, the research facilities. And also, at the waterfront, uh, there is a new building. It's called the uh, uh, Collaborative Life Science Building, or CLSB. And there are faculty from Portland State, OHSU, and actually uh, some of the other universities, like Oregon State University. You will have laboratories. Uh, it's basically close to Portland State and also close to OHSU. And there are multiple ways to get there through the streetcar or in bicycle or walking. And you're allowed to use the car if you need to. Uh, so here's some of the things that we have planned for you. We have planned uh, to have dedicated advising Charles Daniel. Uh, it's uh, in the process or has been hired to be a dedicated advisor. So whenever you have a problem, call him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, actually, earlier we were talking about how important it is to get the right advice. And for you not to have to go to four different places and get four different type of advice, and then you have to come up with something that you think is going to work. So having a dedicated advisor will help us uh, in that regard and help you. Uh, uh, advising about uh, financial aid, uh, summer uh, training programs, so this is an orientation for example, and I'll have a, a brief description of what uh, we plan to do in terms of uh, the student in and of itself. Uh, Travel to national conferences, uh, especially there in Portland, but we'll call it. No, but actually, we want to support you to go and present and a network and meet your colleagues from other places. Uh, we also working with uh, the Department of Human Services to work with uh, youth that have gone through the foster care system. Uh, we also have uh, peer mentors. There are some uh, students who have gone through a similar uh, uh, program, and they'll be available. Uh, for you to uh, hear or exchange things. I know there are things you will never share with us, but you will share with it here. And there might be things that somebody who went through this process it would tell you, yeah, Carlos, he looks fine, but he's a mean guy, don't go to him. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, if you need to see somebody, make sure you get there five minutes before they arrive because they're too busy. There's a lot of advice that peers are very good at giving where to buy books, uh, uh, where you find uh, rental places, etc. that we probably are not fully aware. Uh, so we, we do have uh, peer mentors that will be available. Alan, for example, is a, a peer mentor. Uh, is he here? He just, yeah. All right, but these are, uh, these are uh, things that we have developed to assist you uh, and uh, make sure you're successful. Uh, we want to, and this is part of the things, and. You will go through this pretty much during the next, during this week. Uh, research training for from freshman to senior. Uh, we want to help you prepare to attend graduate school. Uh, you'll be surprised that it's, it's simple and yet not that simple. It, it means applying, taking the GRE. Have you heard of the GRE, the graduate record examination? Well, you need to apply. You need to, uh, you don't have to exactly study for it, but you need to know how to take the test. You need to know where. Uh, to apply for schools, where the deadlines, et cetera, et cetera. So we want to uh, help you with that. We also have other partners on campus. There is a Magnair Scholar Program. There is LSAM. Uh, I know PCC and Portland State uh, uh, have a collaboration with the Lewis Stoke Alliance for Minority, Minority Program. The Howard Hughes Medical Institute to bridge the Baccalaureate Honors Program. So these are other programs that exist on campus that we want you to know about it, and there will be students from these places who will be sharing with you. And so it's not just a, a journey that you're going to take all by yourself. Uh, institutionally, all these things will be happening. We'll develop research learning communities, so you will be embedded with a, a, a research mentor. Uh, we'll have a space, so when you come to Portland State, if you're lost, uh, you can just go to this place and uh, you know that somebody from Exito or somebody from all the other programs will be there. Uh, and, that, and sometimes we need that. We need a place where we, we can go and lower our guard. So we are working on space renovation. There will be all these other activities from uh, pilot research projects, 
uh, mentor training uh, agreements, so your transfer courses, the courses you have taken at your home institution can transfer, and you don't have to take more courses than you need to. Uh, we'll have some faculty from here who might show up at your home institution, and we have a interactive uh, mentoring uh, program that uh, we just received training last week. Last week, our faculty were here for a whole week preparing uh, to uh, work with you. Uh, so it, it is not something that just happened and we're here together and we're going to make it happen, but there is a lot of planning that comes in making you successful. Uh, you ask yourself, what kind of research or what kind of interest am I going to be a chemist or a biology major? But well, yeah, but that's not the only uh, discipline that is part of Mexico. Uh, the request for applications, the proposal required that we address or provide opportunities for biomedical, behavioral, social, clinical research. If you take, for example, smoking, you know, uh, it's, it's more than just uh, uh, a, a biomedical problem. It's a, it's a lifestyle, there's addiction, etc. So we need all disciplines to deal with some of the uh, conditions that make us sick. Uh, we identify these specific disciplines, but there might be others. I don't know what are you thinking in terms of major. It could be engineering, it could be sociology, psychology, it could be public health, biology, chemistry, etc. So all these disciplines are uh, some of the majors that are available. These are examples of research learning communities. Do you see yourself in any of these places? Did you imagine sending an email to your parents tonight? Mom, I'm going to work in plant physiology and biological compounds. <laughs> all right? uh, or something that might be uh, easier to understand. I'm going to be working with somebody in global infectious diseases. So these research learning communities, we have identified faculty who do research in these areas. And they are willing to accept students to be mentored. And in your journey, we hope that you will end up in one of these learning communities. So in summary, uh, you will see that there are a lot of things happening at multiple places. So as a freshman, a sophomore, junior, and senior, you can place yourself. How many of you are freshmen going to the sophomore? How many of you are sophomore going to the junior? All right? So we know that you are going to be in one of these two stages of being uh, a freshman going to sophomore, sophomore going to junior. And these are curricular activities that will be happening. These are research experience that will be starting at this stage. Pay, pay is good, right? <laughs> um, uh, we'll have pilot projects. You'll be developing an independent research uh, portfolio. We'll have peer mentors happening since your freshman year. Uh, you will become a peer mentor at some point. Uh, there are career mentors who are gonna probably help you. There are research mentors, the different types of mentors at different stages. And this is happening chronologically. Here's where we are today. Okay, so it's a long journey ahead of you. So uh, pace yourself. <laughs> Uh, this is probably more for us to know, but you will see that uh, after four years, we're going to have about 350 or so of Exito scholars. And they'll come from different partners universities. And this is the process where we're starting, and you will see that you, we are, you are the first group. We're, I don't, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but we're experimenting with you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Yeah. We're the first group coming through and we have planned. We have made a lot of plans. <laughs> but things are things will happen that we were not aware of. So we need your feedback. So as we go through this process, we need your feedback because the next group will benefit from the things that we did right or things that we could have improved. Uh, let me go into the uh, Percy. Pressy. There you go. I can do this. Concentrate, Carlos. Concentrate. Uh, do I just click? There you go. Wow. You see, guys? If I can do this, you can do it. 
Okay, so uh, uh, you were in high school, I assume that you were in high school, and uh, you, for example, would be interested in studying anything around health-related sciences, and you will take an exit course that first year of college. These are some of the things that we have planned. Uh, if you are Portland State, how many of the Portland State students have taken a freshman inquiry course? All right. And, and some of you took it, I'm not willing to admit it. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's a course that all the students that come to Portland State take. It's a freshman inquiry course. So we're developing a, a freshman inquiry course that is directed at Exeter students, okay? For those of you who did not start at Portland State, will most likely uh, take a uh, sophomore inquiry course, and we were uh, working on that uh, last week about developing this gateway course at your sophomore level that introduces you to exit. What we're doing today is have this uh, uh, opportunity for you to come here and get an orientation on the activities that will happen uh, as an exit scholar. Uh, you apply to become an exit scholar and that happens during your first year and that's part of uh, applying to become Mexico, and that happened last spring. And you heard from us, and you were accepted, and, and that's why you're here. Uh -oh. Concentrate, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our one week. It's a workshop. It's an orientation. Uh, it says you receive funding, so we do not expect you to come here and fund yourself. Some of you have to travel many, many miles. Some of you just took the TriMet bus. Uh, but there are some expenses that comes with that. One of the things you want to do is to uh, bring down those barriers that limited your uh, opportunities, those things that prevent you from uh, pursuing what you wanted to do. And, and this is why uh, you might have, uh, you have received or will receive some funding and we'll have some conversation during this week about the process for that to happen. Uh, we want to learn about you so we can, uh, so you can get to know uh, perhaps a career mentor. Ooh, no. uh, we'll describe what a career mentor for the most part is gonna be a faculty who's involved in teaching some of you uh, some classes. Uh, in year two, you will take this Exito uh, Gateway course that we uh, have finished uh, planning it with your uh, career mentors. Uh, we'll start working on individualizing a career development plan for you and match you to a, a peer mentor. On year three, oh, then after that second year, there'll be next summer, you will have a four week uh, research workshop where we'll, you will have a paid internship on a research project, and that's for next year. Uh, and you will be assigned to a research learning community. So you have the entire year to start planning for next summer. Uh, and as you are being thinking about how, what's gonna happen to you next summer, there will be a new group of students who will be sitting here who will be their freshmen. And there's this cohort of students coming in, and you guys moving, and then you helping out actually those incoming Exito scholars next year. Uh, you will learn about the specific learning communities. Some of you might have an idea that you wanna work in cancer biology. Some of you are interested in social determinants of health. Some of you are interested in global infectious disease. So these things by next summer, we have probably uh, have you match with a career mentor and also a research mentor. Uh, during year three, you will take your junior cluster courses and you learn more about research ethics. You will learn about uh, quantitative uh, research and qualitative research. Uh, you will continue your paid internship. So then at that stage, you're a junior, you transfer, and you will have a paid internship during the year. So, uh, and some of you will have access to scholarship to help you pay for uh, your tuition. Uh, and you will work with a, a peer mentor in writing a proposal, a, a fundable grant 
and you will develop that research question. And what's going to happen is you are going to go through this journey and you are going to have uh, an exchange with peers, with faculty, with researchers, with the university, with the institution, and you, there's going to be this acculturation, this exchange of ideas. Don't change who you are. Don't try to become one of us. Just be yourself, because that's just very critical. We still need your ideas. We still need who you are. Okay? Do it respectfully, though. But it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's great that you, that you bring whatever it is that you have to the research uh, arena, because your ideas are very important. Uh, then the following summer, we'll still have uh, more uh, research workshops during the summer and continue on your in paid internship. And on year four, you will complete your research project. You will take part in an honor thesis or a senior capstone. Uh, you will receive additional stipend. Uh, you will become an Exito peer mentor and uh, you will apply to graduate school. And if you don't, I will come, I have your address, I'll come to your house, <laughs> and I'll make sure you apply uh, to graduate school. And actually, you know, it, you, you can do other things. But it's important that you think that this is a long-term investment. We have funding to help you during these four years. We don't have funding to actually do specific outreach to high school or a specific outreach after you go, after you finish. But this time that you're here, we want to make sure you're successful. And then you graduate and uh, you, we, you will be so far ahead of other seniors who have graduated. You will know what a research proposal is. You will probably have a, a completed a research project. You have probably gone to places to present your, your, your research. You will have a mentor that will guide you and be with you as you go and present other places. You will meet faculty from Harvard. You will meet faculty from Michigan. Uh, you will choose whether you want to stay at Portland State or at OHSU or go to other places. Uh, but you will be highly sought after. There will be a lot of, if I were, I am, a faculty, and I have to do it. Sometimes I forget. And, uh, when I recruit a graduate student, I would love for these graduate students to know what NIH is, for that graduate students to know how to put a grant together. Why is it that the font has to be a certain size and the margins for these grants? How to put a, 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 a resume that we are supposed to submit to these different institutions? That takes a while, but you have gone through that training. So to be able to recruit a students, which we know you're all very smart, but then you also have these skills. It saves me a lot of time. So you will be uh, ahead of many other students who are applying for graduate school, but they have never gone through this process. Uh, so we hope that the training that we provide you in the next three or four years will have an impact actually for the rest of your life. So I, I wasn't completely kidding and we're gonna change the rest of your life. Uh, but that's actually, uh, th that's the, the rewarding part of, uh, of, of this proposal, that uh, you will have the opportunity to move on and be uh, uh, the research and the scientist that uh, you wanted to be. All right, that's it. <laughs>
Um, do we want to take some time? Does anyone have any questions? I know that that's a lot of information, and I know that you all came here with a lot of question marks. And um, we definitely have, you know, I know we have the schedule, but I created the schedule so that we have a little bit of flexibility. So um, if there are questions, now would be a great time to discuss some of those. Yeah. Um, can you explain how uh, we're going to be, for those who are sophomores, who are going to be juniors in the fall, um, how the one, two, three, four year process is going to happen for us? Mm -hmm. So, so the, the question is, if you, if you are a sophomore already, and how your year uh, one, two, three, the next three years will, will affect you. Because basically you're farther ahead than somebody who started from freshman to sophomore, sophomore to junior. So a few things. One is there's this sophomore gateway course, which you miss the boat for that because you're already going into junior. Doesn't mean that you could probably, we could put together a course that give you these skills that you'll have with you to go into a research learning community. So that's one, one issue. So you might have to take an a, a, a intensive workshop on research uh, procedures. Then the second part is you were supposed to already be embedded into a research learning community. And we want to, we have about 25. They're not set up yet. We want to have at least two or three of those set up right away next year. So you can actually then start working in a research learning community coming uh, fall or winter of next year. And, and, and it's very helpful, just like everything, we will start, we think we know what we're doing, but we know that we, we're going to have the opportunity to see how things are working as the smaller groups start working in learning communities. The same thing with the pilot projects. We hope to have at least one or two pilot projects uh, re uh, request for applications. So you start working on your research proposal. Is that? You're saying fall and winter of this year? Yeah, 2016. Not next year? No, yeah, 2015, 2016. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I, I, I want to major in physics, but for some people, and I'm, not, I'm using myself as an example, but I feel like this might relate to everyone yeah. or other people. But um, so what That's if I, I don't totally write off the whole biomedical I'm considering that. Mm -hmm. But my main focus is I want to be a research scientist, but I don't know for sure that I want to do biomedical. So what happens if I decide that I don't want to do that later? Or you yeah. know, is this still yeah. OK that, that we're hanging out and stuff? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so do you I love that. So, uh, actually, physics is one of our areas. Yeah, yeah. I saw and, that. But yeah. like, no, I don't know how oh. physics relates to cancer. Okay, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I don't really know if I want to do cancer. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm trying to see if I can uh, uh, rephrase the question. What if you change your mind and you don't want to be a physicist? No, or what if I change? I'm, I'm speaking in terms of that I want to do biomedical right now. Okay. And um, what if I change my mind later that I don't want to, or not biomedical, yeah, medical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anything. What if I don't want to do medical anything? Yeah, no, that's yeah. fine. So, uh, biomedical is a code word for many things. Okay. NIH is a, a biomedical agency, but they, uh, a lot of the discoveries that we have found in medicine started in the basic science. So, if you I decide I want to study like dark matter, I can oh, that's it kind of cool. how it yeah. goes. You'll be surprised that there might be some cancer cells that yeah. are going into that place. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. Well, you could think about that um, all of these biomedical researchers use pretty sophisticated equipment that you know gets into nanophysics and so forth. So, I mean, you could partner with biomedical scientists to come up with the technology needed to do their research. Okay. You know? okay. So, I mean, it's, it's all good, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. So, frankly, what I want is that you guys finish your four years, that you graduate, and you go to graduate school. Oh. Yeah. And speaking of graduate school, so yes. does graduate school include PhD school, too? Is that also yes. called graduate school? So yeah. Because we might not get our master's. Oh yeah, yeah, too. yeah. Well, okay. Those options are available to you. I myself do not have a PhD, and I'm also not a medical doctor, but they still call me 
I'm a doctor of public health, so uh, I still qualify as a doctor. I don't carry a beaker. <laughs> <laughs> So the partnership with the Oregon Health and Science University includes that faculty from OHSU who are doing research and have labs, they will accept two, three, four students to come into their lab and do research with them. And some of them will, might teach a class uh, at Portland State. Uh, there's a, a relatively emerging strong relationship between OHSU and PSU. Uh, more recently, uh, the School of Public Health between OHSU and PSU has been approved. Uh, you have access to the library also. Uh, there's a lot of things that will happen, hopefully, to make it seamless. Uh, you can go to graduate school there, and they do have graduate programs. Uh, there are also graduate programs here at Portland State. Can I take it out on that? Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. preference involved for having studied under? Uh, is, is there, when you go to graduate school? Right. Well, there is a preference in the fact that they know you, and, and that's sometimes good and bad. You know, you're the guy who's in the microwave, <laughs> and the microwave. <laughs> but, if but, but it allows you to showcase uh, who you are, and they have taught you the stuff that is happening in the lab. Do so you take somebody who is coming from someplace else who doesn't understand the lab? It takes a while, so it, it, is, it opens opportunities for you to actually present. Yeah. So, so these are questions coming from a, one of the four-year colleges, oh, right? okay. where students are not necessarily assuming they'll be here in Portland. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so if I can, and, and I, I know there are other four-year partner yeah. institutions okay. here also. So I, if I can sort of build on what you two have said, it, is it accurate mm -hmm. that number one? Um, students from some of the other colleges could maybe do their summer work here and start forming relationships, but not necessarily transfer. Mm -hmm. and, and then what Shannon was getting at, I think, is if people were interested in graduate work, either at PSU or OHSU, or oh, oh, the other one. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> is there any kind of preference or at least those folks would know what Exodo is and sort of what that means even if they don't know individuals as well. Okay, so there are uh, three universities in this partnership that offer bachelor's degree. Uh, and if you know institutional politics, uh, they don't want to give up their students to another university because you know it, you, it counts when you have your own students and you graduate them. At the same time, we can't stop any of you going anywhere. If you, tomorrow you say, yeah, I'm going to Harvard, I can't stop you, and you're not gonna go to Yale if you don't come here. So you can, not Yale University, but uh, the prison. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you, very, so this four year in universities, University of Alaska, University of Guam, and University of Hawaii. So those students, the, the, the agreement that we have is that those students will actually stay and finish their bachelor's degree at their home institution. We will support your training. Uh, we will provide uh, funding for the university to make sure that you are supported. Uh, you will be part of the entire Exito cohort uh, activities. There will be some learning communities at the four years institution, not just uh, the, the learning communities will be at OHSU, will be at PSU. There, there's, I think, one in Hawaii, there's one in Guam, and, and one in, in Alaska. So you will have access to that learning community. Uh, what if that learning community is not the one you want? That's a good question. And we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, and uh, and we'll, we'll learn from that. Uh, the summer experience, would they all happen at PSU and then go back uh, at the four-year institution? Also, the way we you will receive your stipend is different if you're at a four-year institution versus if you're the traditional community college, PSU to uh, OHSU. Don't you want to add anything on the four-year? Um, first of all, to answer my question, you'll need probably at some point Cindy Morris, who is our, our, our principal investigator at OHSU. 
she also happens to be the associate dean responsible for medical school admissions. So she knows about Exodo and very well familiar with us and I'm very supportive. So that might be some idea of the kind of connections uh, that you have going through the program. Um, but the, the next summer experience could be at your home institution if that's where the, you, there's a resource learning community that you're going into. So um, you could again use that summertime to travel to a partner institution and have the research experience there. Um, or it could be where you plan to start doing your own placement. 